powerful. It will get into you and your body will react to it favorably. And the power of God will be released in you. I'm almost done. Ephesians 2. And I'm going to start at uh, verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved, and hath, make, hath raised up, has raised us up together, one accord, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Very important. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace ye are saved through faith. It's a gift. And that not of, of yourself, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at the time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made high or nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the, the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances for, no ma for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you, which were far off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit, in agreement, one accord, unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with, with the saints and of the household of God. Family. And we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the, all the buildings fitly framed together growth unto a, a, a holy temple, in whom ye also are built together for an inhabitation of God through the Spirit. That's the summation of everything that God did. Why and how. Those verses right there. Two is the number of Jesus. Ephesians actually means saints. The word saints means holy. God comes to sanctify us. Set us apart. That was in those scriptures. He sets us apart from the world. We are no longer members of this world. We are members of heaven and the body of Christ. Okay? To make us one with the Godhead. That's the thousandfold anointing. That the Godhead chooses to have communion with us. Which means we are eternal and you cannot and will not walk away. In Jeremiah 3 critical chapter. Israel, Judah, split, so to say, mm -hmm. in description in there. Okay? And they ran to all all they ran to all these different places doing all these different gods and doing all these things and going from meeting to whatever. Anyhow, it's like today. Okay? They chose their own way. They're no longer in one accord. Okay? During this time, when this took place, God was to bring them back together. When you take a look and, and realize what was taking place in all these things, we recognize the Lord setting things in order and in place of things to come. Okay? 
when you take a look at Jesus coming, he came, John the Baptist is Old Testament, by the way. He is not New Testament. He's in the New Testament. But he died before Jesus did. He cannot be New Testament. New Testament did not start until Jesus died. People say it started when he resurrected. No, no. Because if you take a look, Jesus had to be in the bowels of the earth for three days and three nights. Anybody know why? Hebrew law stated that for a man to be legally dead, he must be, in the, it must be dead for three days and three nights. Mm -hmm. On the fourth, the twinkling of the fourth day, he's declared dead. Now you know the story about Lazarus. That's why Jesus said he's not dead, he's only sleeping. Mm -hmm. He's about to resurrect him. And thank God he called him by name or every tomb would have been opened up. Wow. That's the power of our God. He called him forth. And by focus, he hit the tomb he wanted. Because he was focused on who he was calling. And the spirit realm knew it. That's why any other Lazarus, Lazarus could not come forward. So, and then what did he do? He ordered the, the great clothes to be removed from him. Well, there was two sets of great clothes, just like with him. Okay? Took you off the body and the head. It represented what was about to come to pass with Jesus. Now, when they went to Jesus' tomb, they found two piles. Okay? The body represented us. He died for us. That was the body. It remained. But the head, he had to go to heaven, prepare a place for us. That's why they were separated. Okay? In the process of what God is revealing and what they're doing, We've got to recognize many things taking place. God wants us to see ourselves in Him. Everybody talks about Jesus being in you. Well, what about you in Jesus? Mm -hmm. That's what it says. Yes. Yes. 1 John 2.27 is all about this. <coughs> Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will give you another comforter, the Holy Spirit. <coughs> When we look at these things for what he said in the spirit, it's different from what we think he said in the physical. Mm -hmm. We always have to look at the Lord and find out what he's saying spiritually. That's what got the church in trouble. That's how the church walked slowly away. Ever so slowly, they were seduced. And it was so slow that they didn't see it or know it. <coughs> now the Lord allowed me in my walk with him to do this. He allowed me to very slowly slip backwards. He would move his hand a little at a time, and I slowly slid backwards. Till one day I said, I don't feel you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Which I don't go by feeling, but when, he's, when he doesn't have his hand on you, you know it. And that's what I meant, Lord, I don't feel it. I don't feel your hand on me. What's going on here? And the Lord began to teach me about backsliding. It's so subtle that the whole world is backslidden. Except for a few. That's why there's always a remnant that he will keep to get spirit and truth flowing and keep it flowing with the fire of God through the Holy Spirit. The church is about to be turned upside down. We have to come out of the tombs. It's time for us to wake up. The ten virgins, it's time to wake up. The noise of the bridegroom is coming. Well, the noise of the king is already here. And he's moving. And he's looking for those who are going to receive him and join him in what he's doing so he can use you, not you using him. I believe that God is because God said he's going to be taking leaders and stuff because he needs to get them out of the way so they can't interfere with what he wants to do. Because too many leaders are still in what has happened instead of what God is about to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And we got to come to that place of understanding and that also to where we understand we've got to step in here, not back here. You cannot go backwards. God is not a God of habit. God is a God of fresh manna. Which means new things. And we're in the process of receiving new manna. Like snow on the mountains. 
It's like the Word of God frozen in time, waiting for the sun to put fire on it and bring it forth. That's what's happening right now. Everything that's been held in time is being released. And the manifestation of what is in this Word, the manifestation of what's in the water of the Word that's being released, is going to shake the foundations of everybody. I don't care who you are. Especially the scholars. Okay? And don't take that wrong in how I said that, because I believe that what God's going to do, He's going to shake the schools that have been teaching people. Okay? And it's like the Lord told me when I got saved, He says, half the, half the pastors, I don't even know. And half of the half, I have not ordained. Mm-hmm. If God has not ordained you, you're just, your teaching means nothing to God. And that's what got the church in trouble. Everybody wanted to be pastors when they're not ordained to be pastors. God did not choose and ordain them to be pastors. So what do they got? They got knowledge. They have no revelation. Because the Holy Spirit's not in control. When the Holy Spirit's in control, you will receive not just the wisdom of God, but you'll receive the revelation of the Son. And the Holy Spirit will bring it and will become a holy fire of your life and those around you because you will be used by God to release it. The glory of God is the Holy Spirit. And He's seven times hotter. And when God releases this fire, which is coming down, remember, fire was called down. This is going to be one of those biblical events. He's going to let it, He's going to release the fire of God on this earth because it says in the Word of God that He will pour out the Spirit upon all flesh. And when God says all flesh, He means all flesh. And it's meant to give them an opportunity without the devil's interfering, which means the holy angels are going to be busy, the Holy Spirit's going to be busy, and if the devils come at that person to try and stop from hearing God, God will consume them with that fire. Because He's going to give everybody on this earth one more chance to receive Him. That's why this will be the great harvest before He comes back. It must happen before He comes back. Okay? It's scriptural. And we've got to recognize that the fire of God, when it's seven times hotter, it destroys the strong men. Okay? He's not going to just cut things loose. He's going to consume it with fire. Deliverances are going to take place. Yes, there will be individuals here and there, but the majority of them will be mass deliverance. Anybody ever hear of Ben Worley? Mm-hmm. Okay. He was, in, he was in Des Moines, Washington, right near to where we used to live. So, in fact, she used to live in that town. He would, in that church that he had, it was right by SeaTac, which is in between Seattle and Tacoma, Washington. It's uh, south of Seattle, north of Tacoma. The, uh, <clears throat> when you came in, they handed you a bag, a vomit bag. True. And all he did is stood up there and preached. And God would give him something, he'd call it out. And believe me, the bags were used. Okay? The church was known for this. And it continued until he passed and went to heaven, went home. So whether it's still in there now or not, I don't know. Uh, but he wrote some pretty powerful books from what I understand. I've never read them, but I heard they're, pr- they're pretty powerful. So, we are in that place again. I believe he was used to prophetically reveal what's about to take place. Okay? People are manifesting. Wherever I go, somebody mas- something's manifesting everywhere I go. And that should be happening to <clears throat> us. Is that not what happened with Jesus? Is he not in you? Then why aren't there manifestations around you? It's a good question for the church. Why? Everywhere Jesus went, Something manifested. Deliverances, healings, even the, even the devil speaking to the people. They knew who he was. Don't think it's strange if somebody talked to you or, I'm serious, you know, some little girl speaks with a man's voice. Well, it's real. Don't be surprised somebody gets on the floor and starts wiggling like a snake. It's real. I've seen it. Be careful when you pray for someone to receive the Holy Spirit. 
Make sure they're saved. Get them to confess Jesus Christ as Lord. From their heart. Not just repeat it. They must confess it before you pray for them to receive the Holy Spirit. Because if you don't and they're not saved, they will get a familiar spirit or a spirit guide. And it will have every right to be in that person. These are things the church is supposed to be doing, but it's not being taught. This is what the gifts of the Holy Spirit is about. The gifts of the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to see the spirit realm and the truth of that. If you got a demon, so what? So what? You don't have a fleshly body. You don't have your temple yet. You have not been converted to spirit yet. What's the big deal? So the devil doesn't like you. It's because of Jesus who's in you. Now you think that devil loves being in that body with you, with you and Jesus? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's torment to them. Remember the sons of Sceva. It's very important to, to you to hear this. There were seven sons. And they saw Jesus and what he was doing, or the disciples and what they were doing, so that he thought that he was going to do this. Or they thought they were going to do this. Well, on a man who had a demon. Well, that demon <laughs> says... Paul, or Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Who are you? And they, that demon beat them guys up. All seven of them ripped their clothes off. They were naked and ran them out of their house. Their own house. Do you know how humiliating that is? And I'm sure that they were pretty well built men. Because back in those days, you know, they didn't have the stuff we had today. They did things physically. But it's important to know who you are. Okay? When you're right with God and Jesus is enthroned in you, and you're enthroned in Him, in Him, and the Holy Spirit has His place in you, you are the temple of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in compliance with them, believe me, the devils know who you are, and they will equate you just like John or uh, Paul. Jesus I know, Blah, blah, blah. Okay? It's critical for you to understand. That's why they come at you, because they know who you are. They know what you're called to do because it's written on a heart like a sash. You know, the, these things they wear for victors and stuff. Okay? You're victorious. It's already written on your heart who and what you are and what you've been called to do. They know this. They know the families. They've watched the family histories. I'm not giving them any credit. I'm just giving you some truth here. Cut everything off. Take the sword of the Lord, the Lord of hosts, and start cutting away. Sever all connections from you to them and them to you. And get yourself free of this world. God will lead you and guide you in it. That's where freedom comes. Now all you have is your connections to the Lord and the connections of the Lord to you. This is called consecration. Sanctification is just separates you from the world to begin to work on you. Consecration is you become Mary. And you sit at his feet day and night. Even while you walk, you're sitting at his feet. No matter what you're doing, you're sitting at his feet. That's called the glory of God. Residing over you as he resides in you. And now you are enthroned in heavenly places. That's why I said in the beginning, not everybody is seated in heavenly places with Christ. And I hate saying it, but I have to speak the truth. The church is in trouble. The judgment of God is here. It is beginning. Leaders are beginning to be taken by the Lord for whatever purposes he has. <coughs> I know one of the main purposes is God does not want people looking backwards. This is a whole new movement of God that man has not seen before. That's why so many are going to get saved. It'll be like no movement before other than when he came the first time. He's preparing the way for him to come back again. 
Okay? He's actually been here twice already. It is not the son of the coming of Christ. It is the third coming of Christ. Mm. You think I'm not you think I'm wrong? He came, right? Went on the cross, right? Then he left the earth, did he not? Mm-hmm. And he came back. Is that not the second? Mm-hmm. He left and came back. Because he had to go be enthroned to bring the Holy Spirit to us. For anybody who would receive. So it's actually the third coming of Christ. And I like it because he's the Alpha and Omega, right? Mm-hmm. Okay? So, breads and fishes. Originally he brought the Word of God, did he not? Mm-hmm. And gave the Holy Spirit, right? Okay? So, as the Omega represents the fish. The bread is the begin, is the Alpha. The fish represents him as the Omega. Why? What is the oil and fish called? Omega-3. 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 <laughs> Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Revealed by the Holy Spirit, the mind of Christ. Ephesians 1.17. I wish you all had the Spirit or Omega-3 oil. You understand now why? Because the healing properties comes through the Holy Spirit from the throne of Jesus, the healer. That's why the Holy Spirit has been pushed out of the church and this is why the church has taken communion unworthily and they are sick and dying. Because they're taking it unworthily and they're not being taught the truth. We need to recognize the teachings are watered down, lukewarm, made of none effect, if not a pure lie. And the only way that can be defeated is what Jesus did in Matthew 4 and Luke 4. Defeat it with the truth through the Spirit of God. We have to start speaking spirit and truth whether people like it or not. Because that's the truth is what sets us free. Mm-hmm. Okay? And it also says in John 4, I believe it's uh, somewhere in verse 20 to 23, it says, God is the Spirit. And the day will come that he will, he will seek those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. That's the Holy Spirit and Jesus. Okay? That's the Father. Okay? So when we recognize the truth in things from a spiritual aspect, this is one of the reasons why you, a lot of my writings and stuff will say, what if? The reason I use what if is to make you think. It's to make people think. Instead of just throwing it out, it makes people think. And I'm going to start using it more and more and more. Now, people kind of say, well, you said no. I said, what if? Okay? Because we're going to get scrutinized. Especially, and, and please forget, this is not to offend, especially by scholars, by teachers. As the Lord told me, a scholar is simply a spiritual scientist. I said, Lord, he said, don't worry, I have many, many scholars. And I love them, and they have my truth. But the problem is, there's a remnant. That's why the church is in the state it's in now. They're scholars. The leaders have become scholars. They've gone to school, and they've got this divinity, uh, uh, what do they call it? Um, Doctor of Divinity. Master of Divinity. 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 You know, divinity is also means war, uh, witchcraft. Divining. Divining. Okay. Divination. Just like we got to be careful who we call reverend. According to the Word of God, there's only one that's reverend. Mm-hmm. It's the Holy One of Israel. Father. We need to be careful. That is a crown of pride. There's no one on the earth who is holy. We're made holy through the blood and righteousness of Jesus Christ until we're with him. He's the Holy Jesus Christ. Hmm? He's the only one. The only one. Jesus Christ. That's exactly right. Yes. Yeah. He's known as the Holy One of Israel. So there are so many things that's happened. You've got to realize that, that the devil has done this. He knows what he's doing. I'm not giving him any credit, but he's not stupid. But sometimes, I hate to say this, the, the body of Christ sometimes is pretty silly and stupid. Mm-hmm. They're so busy in what they're doing, they don't recognize what they're doing. Yeah. Yes, yes. I saw a vision once, and I'm going to I'm going to end with this. Oh, I'm going to make it. Can we have just a little bit more time to fellowship? 
Otherwise, we're going to leave it all for you. <laughs> Joshua. <laughs> I'm messing with you, brother. Uh, what was I going to say, Lord? Oh, I saw this vision. Thank you, Jesus. See, John 14, 26, it says, The Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance whatsoever yes, I have said. Indeed. And he usually multiplies it when he brings it back because you trusted him and called on it. Mm. So I had this vision once, and I'm going to end with this. I had this vision once of a room. And it was all white. No furniture. But there were stacks of paper everywhere, just all over. Legal documents. And it's like this, down the middle, there was like an invisible... Um, partition. Yeah, partition, you know, but it was clear. You could barely see it, but it was there. In the spirit, it was there. And then I looked to the left, and I looked to the left, there's a, 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 there, there's a door, it's closed, but I can see through it. And on the other side of the door, there's a, there's a you know, the a police line tape they use? Mm -hmm. and there's, a, there's a tape across that says, not yet. Oh. <laughs> and what's going on the other, there's a court going on on the other side. Okay? The interesting thing about this court, I can see Jesus sitting behind a wonderful counselor spot. And I look up at the throne, and then all of a sudden I look over here to the right, and there, there's the devil. Okay? And then I look back up at the throne, and I can see the Father, but then the Father fades, and I see Jesus. Because God gave him that throne. Righteous judgment. This is a court of petitions. And then the Lord says, now look at the petitions. So I start looking at the petitions, and the Lord said, these are petitions against my people. For what they're saying... And how they're saying it. Pretty scary, isn't it? The court system is based and came out of heaven. You'd be so shocked if you really start looking around, you'll see how the Bible has been copied and used physically on this earth. So, a courtroom, just to let you understand. Here's the people. Let's say this is the court over here. And there's two tables. Okay? And then there's a space. Then there's a space. And then there's this little wall. And then the people. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of the Bar Association? Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Lawyers. Jesus loved lawyers, didn't he? Mm -hmm. That was a joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <I laughed. laughs> but he did. He actually called them broods of vipers, okay, along with the scribes, Pharisees, and lawyers, right? right? Right. Scribes is what writes things, okay? There's a scribe in the law, right, in the courtroom, okay? There's a lawyer, okay, and there's a Pharisee, okay? There I see prideful, okay? And then there's this wall. Well, this wall on the on the outside of that is the is they're called lawyers. But on the other side of that, toward the courtroom, they're called counselors. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because of that wall. You know what that wall is called? Mm -hmm. The Bar Association. Mm -hmm. It separates what's going on from the people. Mm -hmm. So the people can have nothing to do with that throne. Divide. Yep, yep. That's right. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It divided the house of God. Mm -hmm. Now, through Jesus Christ, we have access to that judge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is the judge. Mm -hmm. Not the Father, Jesus Christ. The reason I saw the Father in the age of spirit and I saw the Son is because the Father gave him everything. Mm -hmm. That's the throne of righteous judgment. And over here at the table is the throne of grace. The blood covenant. The throne of what? Grace. The grace. throne of grace, blood covenant. Okay? That's why he's the, our counselor, and he's wonderful, okay? We need to access that. I know people have been talking about this book, uh, Petitions and... and um, Courts of Heaven? Yeah, but um, restraining orders and stuff. Oh, yeah, restraining okay. orders, issuing restraining it's real. orders. Yeah. It's very real. Oh, yeah. um, ask the Lord to reveal it to you, because he's not only the judge, he is also our counselor. That's right. And he is good. And the devil knows it. But the devil doesn't want us knowing about that. That's why these books have been waited until this time.
Okay? God is releasing books, CDs, DVDs, teachings that, that are going to change the whole world before he's done for a moment in time. Okay? Because all prophecy must be fulfilled. Okay? And we are in that process. That's why we got lots of time. Don't think he's coming soon. He's not. We got lots of time because too many things in the Word of God have not been fulfilled yet. The new temple has not been built. Even though they have the furniture, they're building the altar and all that for the new temple. It had not been built. And until it's built, he cannot come back. Okay? Because that's part of the Word of God that must be fulfilled for him to come back. The great harvest must take place before he can come back. It has not happened yet. When the Word of God says great, it's beyond our comprehension. That's why billions are going to get saved. I believe at least one third of the earth is going to get saved. That's me. I believe that. I believe that. And I'm praying for even more. I would like at least one in every four people to get saved. Just like the sword of the sea. Even more than that. I pray, when I pray, I ask God to save as many as he can. And if they're going to lose, if they're going to lose, I said about my own children and grandchildren too, my family. If anybody is going to lose their salvation, please take their breath and take them home before they lose their salvation. Yes. And that is the cry of a father, a husband, and a family member. Yes. And I meant it. I mean that from my heart. Yes. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless your children, Lord. Call them and put them in place, Lord. Help them to choose and decide better. Turn us to your Son in ways we have not thought of. Holy Spirit, come. You are the mind of Christ. And please, come to the people of God, even to the unsaved who will eventually know God because God knows them. And I ask you now to begin the process in front of these witnesses that it becomes a testimony to you, Lord Jesus, in what you're doing. I'm crying out also for mercy, Father, but I'm also crying out for grace and compassion, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, come with a holy fire that is going to purge your people, going to purge the church, going to purge the body, going to purge the family and bring them into one accord. No more divisions. Bring forth a hunger for your gifts. It was given to man. That was mean men and women both. Stop the divide between God's people, especially male and female. It stops in the name of Jesus. For in heaven we are all the same. And we should be all the same on earth according to the Spirit of God. I ask you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus to bring us to a place of, war, of <laughs> wisdom and revelation, Lord, that it cannot be denied and that we will humble ourselves before you and throw ourselves before you, Lord, and cry out for mercy as we repent and seek forgiveness. Cause us to go before the mirror every day, if necessary, more than once a day, and come and face you face to face in that mirror within ourselves. Bring us to an inner healing, Lord Jesus, which you came to bind up the broken hearts, and bring us to a state of wholeness as you did in the Word of God when you were here. Only you could do this, Lord. We cannot do it. And as your Word says, apart from you, we can do nothing anyhow. We don't want to do anything without you, Lord. Let us make you number one. First in our thoughts, first in our words, first in our actions. We don't move lest you are moving us. Make us fruitful, Lord. Even as with Peter, Lord God, Cause us to sit before you while we partake of what you have provided. Cause us to repent and be restored for denying you in so many different ways, Lord. Especially in spirit and truth. Father, begin the process of bringing people to repentance because they pushed away, grieved, or quenched the Holy Spirit. And Father, forgive all of us for at one time or other, Lord, in our walk, we have called you a liar because we didn't believe what you were saying to us. Mm -hmm. Bring us to a place of repentance, Father. 
that we will acknowledge that Jesus Christ, you and the Holy Spirit, cannot lie. Grant us that ability, Lord, and that strength and confidence with a boldness, Lord God, to believe what you say to us and what we, you believe, you say to us that we will believe that even you believe because you spoke it to us in spirit and truth. Let us receive that, Lord. Yes. Don't let us use our thoughts of ourselves to deny what you're saying to us. And we repent, Lord, for not believing you or calling you a liar. Not that we did it on purpose, Lord. Remember, we were blind, and we are blind, but you're changing that. Remove the veil, scales, blinders, and blockers, Lord, from us, Lord God, that we can hear you, see you, know you, even when you touch us, without question. And do the five R's on us, Lord. Don't just cause us to be reborn again. Cause us to be restored. Cause us to be rejuvenated, regenerated. I can't remember the other one now. But anyhow, Lord, you know what they are. Renewed. Renewed, yes. Renewed. Thank you. Bring us to that place, as you said, that the, the two would become a one new man. That means one new heart. That's your heart, the key of David. Unlock us, Lord, with your heart. That we know you in spirit and truth as you know us in the spirit of truth. I pray right now for the people, Lord God. As Paul would say, and I'm going by the unction of the Holy Spirit right now, I wish you all had the spirit of wisdom and revelation, also known as the mind of Christ, and that you would come in alignment with that mind and put away all things that you think you know, all things you think you have, and all the wisdom and revelation and all the pride and everything else that goes with all that and receive what the Godhead wants to give us. I pray, Father, now that that be established in us, Lord God, as we are even founded in the rock, not just on him, in him, even as he is founded in us because we give any place, Lord. Enthrone us now, Lord Jesus, even within ourselves in you as you are enthroned in us. It causes us to bow to you and back up, Lord God, that you can have your way not only move into us, but move through us for your glory. Let the signs, wonders, and miracles begin, Lord God, to confirm what you have given us and begin the process of bringing it into harvest. Get your leaders finished up, Lord. Get them in place where you need them. Shift them now, Lord God, into the places they need to be. And as you take Sean and I back and forth from the state of Washington to here, Lord God, I know the day is going to come. There's going to be a third city, Washington, D.C. And Lord, Illinois is caught in between that. Let it be so, Lord. Bring forth your glory. Bring forth your fire. Bring forth your spirit and truth. Bring forth the Father's will and release them into us, onto us and all around about us. And seal them with a breath of the Holy Spirit, and what the blood within us washes down, purge us with the holy fire, Lord yes, God. God. Bring us to the place that we need to be in you, Lord God, that you are glorified. In Jesus' name, and be pleased, Father. We do our best to love your Son back, but let us love him more. Let us love him the way you do. Even as you love us, let us love him back. Let us go to church to love on him and touch him that it will move his hand to move on to people who don't know him that well. But bring us to a place of safety in that, Lord, knowing that we will, because that's your will to be done. Make us your mirrors, Lord Jesus, for the whole world to see you in spirit and truth. Help us to stay that way. Keep us from pride, Lord God. Give us the cloaks of humility, Lord God, and humbleness to stand before you and walk with you as you walk with us. We thank you, Lord, for all things that you've done, are doing, and especially what you are about to do. Let us not fear, but let us rejoice and have hope that you are God, that this earth is still your footstool. We are still in your hand, and you have control of everything, because you do. That you're sovereign, 
and there's none greater than you but the Father himself, and you are one. Grant us to be one with you, Lord Jesus, and have no problem with it. Show us and reveal to us how you are literally our best friend also. Holy Spirit, come. <laughs> Treat us like a bunch of children so we can have some fun. Lord Jesus, come and wrestle with us. Play with us, Lord Jesus, so that we can sing Hosanna. Pick us up and put us in your lap, Lord. I speak of things to come, even to warn those who come against, to back up, even as you convert them, because you are spirit of truth and you're worthy. Show us your glory, Lord God. Reveal to us what you have for us. And release us into that. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray all these things and thank you. Amen.